We did the recommendation for the McRobber family with the stinging tackles. Now we couldn't do the fisting. <laughs> We're going to be a step. Now we're gonna do the barbecue. We got some hot. That's oh, oh, some, some better fish. Welcome to Smart Sunker TV. This is the first episode ever made of the Smart Sunker TV on Channel Gratis. Yoo -hoo! Yoo -hoo! And, um, I, and I'm here to supervise. Yeah. <laughs> you and my friend, my good friend and uh, owner of Smart Sunker uh, no, of no, Channel cannot. Gratis. <laughs> the Channel Gratis yeah. is here with me today, co starring. Yeah. Anything you want to say to the audience? Yeah, uh, first of all, I'd like to tell you, ask you politely to go on to a Facebook group called Everyone Who Wants Max Hamburger Ultimate Cheese Back. <laughs> <laughs> because I really want the ultimate cheese back in the... Yeah, the ultimate cheese. Yeah, the ultimate cheese meal on Max Herber Hamburger Restaurant. Wow. Uh, it's a small group, but it's growing and we're going to make them, you know, put it back. Okay. Then I, that. And, yeah. and then I want to catch a big pike. Then I have a request. I want world peace. World peace? Yeah, fix that for me, guys. World peace. Do you have a group? Do you have no, a no, fan no, page? no, 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 we don't need that. Mm. It's, a, it's a karma thing, you know, just good vibes and vibrations. All right, and, world, peace. world peace, world peace and ultimate cheese meal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ready. And today's episode is named uh, after the the excellent pike fisher and movie maker, Pontus Sjölund. You're never gonna nail it. You remember it? Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna call this episode Rippin' Lips and Riggin' Rubber. All right. Woohoo! Let's, Let's head out. fucking do it, bro. <laughs> Nice steak. Is it a good fish? No, but it's going to be as hell. It could be a really good fish. Sweet! Oh, that's a nice girl. Oh. Take a Great. Bam! Bam! Perfect. Here you go, baby. On the blue silver flake thingy. We're gonna do a quick catch and release here due to the warm conditions. Bye bye, girl. Bye. Yeah. Great release. Fast. High five. Yeah. yeah, this was a shallow rig. We have the shallow screw in the front here. Klaus rigged it up for me. I fished it quite slow actually to get it down and then I did a fast retrieval and um, I got a reaction strike. Boom! Happy, happy, happy days. The days are so happy. Because you and I are fishing pike. Pike! Pikey pike! Oh, happy days. Pikey pike! <laughs> Ooh, that, come here. Ooh, nice follower. Ooh. Oh, oh, yeah. Ooh, there you go. Oh, it's a nice oh, fuck, fish. I lost oh. it. I lost it. Well, we're now fishing a, a platform where it's pretty shallow. It goes from deep to shallow pretty quick. And uh, our friend the Bream is spawning on the shallow water up there. So we're fishing the drop. See if there is any pike going up and down in that area. And 
uh, places that hold spawning bream, it's, well, you can catch some pretty big, decent pikes in that area. Um, Pike who feeds on the bream, they have to be quite big. Yeah, they the have to. Is a big, yeah, they have to be big. Big whitefish. Especially have a big, big fucking mouth. <laughs> like a bucket. <laughs> calamares, calamares. Are we going to have calamares? No, we're going to have uh, Turkish uh, meatballs. Kefteris. Okay. This is good they stuff. Look, they don't look like balls. They look more like flat balls. They look like uh, hamburguesa. Hamburguesa. Yes, I All make right. like this because you grill fast. Ah, mm. grill fast. Yes. Well, we're driving through a channel where it's, uh, it's a speed limit in it, and the channel is pretty, pretty long. So uh, to save time, we combine the, the barbecue stuff together with uh, the fishing experience and together with the, how should I put it, it's, the nature is so fine today. So we, uh, we're embracing life together with our mission of world peace domination. Now we're going to do the barbecue. We got some hot. Today, I'm going to show you some of the, the Svartsonker line rubber baits. And here is the famous Mac Rubber. It's a family of three different lures. One that's called Mac Rubber Junior, one that's called Mac Rubber, and one is called the Big Mac Rubber. And um, I got them in many different colors. Check your uh, tackle shop for, for them. I'm not going to go through all of those. but. I get a lot of different uh, questions from folks that wondering how to uh, to make the best hook position and uh, and rig for for these baits. So I'm going to demonstrate how we do that. First of all, I'm going to start with Macrubber Junior. It's a little bit smaller than the other other guys. It's only 17 centimeters. The Macrubber is 21 centimeters. And the big mug rubber, it's 25 and a half. So it covers a lot of different situations, a, de a lot of different fishing depths, and a lot of different uh, fishing techniques or whatever. You can fish them anyhow. All right. First of all, you have to decide what type of, of, uh, of depth you're going to fish them in. Um, we can start to, I, I can start to show you guys how I do when I put in a, a jig hook in these guys. And I find the easiest way to doing that is to place a small marker where the hook is gonna come out from the, from the body. I take the hook point, make a small hole there, and all the baits in the McRubber family, they have a pretty wide head. That means that you have to bend the head, otherwise the hook shaft could become a knife and cut it open. So what I do, I put it in there, squeeze it, and then I, I follow it by bending the head like this. And push it in there. And here you got a, a nice presentation. And then I always secure the, the head with some super glue or crazy glue. <laughs> crazy glue! Don't eat this, it's dangerous. It tastes really bad. Push it in there and then it's stuck. And then it's pretty important as well that you got a, a straight line here. I'm gonna do one with the shallow screw as well. The shallow screw is a, it's a bigger pig eye screw that I make together with a, a very good friend of mine. Mange Boy 79, Magnus Lindgren from up north. And uh, we're branding these by Lure Builders United. You take one of these, these funny looking things, 
take the McRubber Jr., put it in there, and squeeze it in. Squeeze it in. Just yeah, screw it in there. You can either have it that way, or you can screw it in there and have it this way. It doesn't really matter how, how you, you angle them. I make a very basic gig with just one single treble hook, size 2.0. For the, for the jig head, you just attach it this way. Got a small spike there. Put it in the butt, in the, in the body, and then secure the hus hook this way. What I use for the small guys is uh, a 13 pound test wire, uh, nylon coated steel leader. What I need to is this to check how long with the leaders, and this would be enough, 12, 13 centimeters. And you can either use single connected sleeves or double connector sleeves. Doesn't really matter. Two of those, chuck one in there, chuck one in there, secure it. And then I got a, a nice, plier here that I think is awesome and I think it's pretty important as well when you do this don't press too much on the end leave some of the of the space for the ends because if you go further out when you do this uh, you weaken the wire because it's get, getting more uh, more pressure on the ends and when the pike start to head it, shake his head and uh, the leader or the wire will, yeah, will snap off easier. So you push one of those and push one of those and boom, chukala, it's done. Then you of course need a hook. And I prefer to use split rings as well. A lot of guys don't like that. And they're saying that it's, you easily lose fish or the leader could uh, start walking through the eyelets of the, of the split ring, but I have never done that. And yeah, I do it, I like it. I think it works fine for me. Okay, squeeze it again, like this. And then, the good thing about these suckers is that they are made from plastics. And I, I like to secure these. And you know, plastics and fire are like, they melt it down. That's just a extra security. If you look closer, you see that the plastics has melted and that makes a, an extra safety measurement for, for the, the uh, the stinger tackle to, to break. And then I, I like to use uh, spikes on these ones because then you can either choose having the hook hanging bare, uh, just, you know, waving around like a free willy in the ocean side or, or you can shuck up the hook and the bait and leave it in there. There's a lot of different brands of these ones or you can make your own by uh, some stainless steel. So here's one of those. Uh, just put it in there and it's done. And some guys, they don't like to use yig heads. So when they're fishing in deeper areas, they use egg sinkers. And when you do it this way, it's super easy as to attach one of those directly to the, to the stay lock. And boom. Do we need to prepare the net or? Ah. I think it's a little bit bigger fish. Oh, no, it's like a three and a half kilo fish again. They're strong, man. Really strong today. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> <laughs> 
a super hard take. Bam! Yeah. Uh, on the on the small uh, uh, on the small MacRubber Junior. Got some nice tooth marks in there. Got a seven gram head with a one O hook on it. Perfect. That was a fucking super hard hit. Yep. I got the I got the teaser. That's the smallest pike today. <laughs> I had four four strikes here in this area by a small pikes, and they're just nibbling on the on the tail part, on the pedal part of these baits. And uh, always, when you fish rubber baits, you need to give them a little bit extra love, go through them to to make them hold hold up a little bit better. And I bought one of these um, electric welding tools. Just push the button there, and this. This area here gets really, really hot and it melts the rubber. See, it starts to smoke there. And I got a pretty decent cut there. And probably next pike that will hit this one will, will eat up the paddle. And then I will lose the paddle and have a bait without a paddle. And that's not what I want. I want a paddle on it. I melt the, the rubber with, with this machine here and that glues it all glues it up again. So it gets almost brand as brand new. This machine is perfect. I don't need any glue or any mended or anything. I can just do this straight on the lake, you know. Now I'm ready to fish again. And I won't lose the paddle. Mwah! Now we're gonna do the Mac rubber. Okay, if I want to use a jig head. I do the same thing, the same thing as we did on the, the McRubber Union. You get 10 gram. Attach it perfect. You see where the hook's coming out with the hook. Make a small cut there. And this one's got a very wide body. So it's very important that you follow it with your finger. Otherwise, the hook shank could become a knife and cut it straight open. You press it, get it out there, and boom. Perfect. And we're going to do one with the shallow screw again from Lure Builders United for the shallow fishing. That's so popular. Take the shallow screw, twist it in there. And a lot of guys, when, when they when they attach these to the base, they're pushing it really hard. And don't do that. Just screw it in there. Screw it. Screw it. Screw it. You don't need to push. Just screw it. Okay. And we're going to make a, a rig that looks like this. Two 2 -oh hooks. 65 pound test leader, a swivel, and two connector sleeves. That's it. First of all, you need the, the nylon coated stainless steel leader. And we will need about, I mean, you can measure one of these ones. We will need about this much because we're going to loop it as well. So we'll take one of those, cut it off. And then you need some connector sleeves, two of those. And you need a swivel sleeve, swivel. Chuck it in there. And then I I always leave a little bit bigger, a little bit wider loop there because I think I get a better position from the hook on the bait. The funny looking plier, you can use a normal plier, that works as well, but I like this one. Think about the edges, I'll cut it too close back there. 
squeeze, squeeze, and then we do the same thing with the end. I'll make a little bit smaller loop back there. Okay, again, think about the, the ends, not too close. Squeeze, squeeze, and then we're going to do some burning. Up by ring ring, down on a new design. Well, you see, the plastic melts. It secures the, the wire a little bit extra. And I think it gives it a little bit nicer edges. Okay, two hooks. So you put one of those on the swivel in the front. The swivel. Have you ever met anyone called Swivel? I haven't. And then we need some of these uh, spikes. Just attach them like this, boom. And then we're ready to go. I prefer to have the first hook as close to the head as possible because I believe that, or my experience is that a lot of fish attack it to the head because it probably thinks it's so, so similar to a natural fish. And it's very important that you have them in a straight line underneath. And when the fish attacks it, boom. And for the shallow, first you attach the, the bait, then you attack the leader, the stinger tackle, boom. One hook in there. Boom. Boom. It's very important that you got a straight line there. Otherwise, the lure will start spinning, especially the mac rubber. Uh, the mac rubber junior and the big mac rubber, they are uh, a little bit more forgiven. The good thing about this is the exact position and the length of these ones are perfect for another of my soft plastics. And that one is called the big tail grub. The grub. Oh, here it is. The grubs. They look like snails from hell. Big rub there. You take a shallow screw, chuck it in there. Don't push it, just squeeze it in. Screw it in there. And the good thing about these ones is that you can, you, you can fish them super shallow. Attach it to the stay lock and then Push one of those on there, and then put in the, the good old hook in there, and one hook in there, and one hook like that, in a straight line. You have a super shallow working pike killing bait. Not killing, catching, pike catching. We don't kill pike, we love pike. It's got some fantastic movements. I mean, it goes side to side like a, I don't know, like a, what do you call it, swim bait? Yeah, I would say a wounded eel slash yeah. swim bait, whatever. But I, I've seen similar products like this. Yeah. Uh, do they also go side to side like no, that? No, no. But this one's got a, a little bit different shape in the end here. And yeah. I mean, that's where all the swimming action is from. In the end here? Yeah, in yeah. The, in the beginning in this, of the this, this, this area. All right. This area, when, when this one curls in the water, it transforms the, I yeah. would say, the dynamics from the, the movement it shifts to, to the head. The and that's right. why it shakes. You okay. Know? You know, it's thinner there and it gets wider and then a little bit thinner there. So, so it's all, a wider area in the yeah, end that's that gives, making the, yeah. okay. That gives the, the movement of it. I mean, you've seen the head shakes on that one? Actually, it really swims, you know? It's got a little bit of a blue shimmer there. Yeah. I used one of these skippy fishy pens and just draw a little bit on it to get a... I mean, if you had a one colored lure, you can color it yourself. With, I mean, there's a lot of different pens on the market. Leaves a lot of room for creativity. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you can play around with it. Well. Or if you buy, let's say, a white one, and then you buy two uh, motor oil ones, you can cut them in half and, make, uh, and glue them together or whatever. Then you have a, 
a pearl white motor oil buttocks big oh, tail grub. I got it. You know. It's a lot of fun, Klaus. You're a Swedish brand. Yeah. And uh, I mean, Sweden has a, a world history of bait development and lure building. Sure. From back in the days. Sure. And uh, you're sort of the next generation of that. It's, it's just so much fun Ooh. listening, <laughs> hearing you talk about it. <laughs> this hit? Yeah. So. <laughs> I just came up there and <laughs> subsurfaced over it. <laughs> cool, man. That was awesome. It wasn't bigger than the bait. <laughs> <laughs> Pikes are so cool, they could eat fucking things, they're the same size. <laughs> you know, oh, that's a nice one. That's a better fish. That's a good take, man. Oh, fuck. At least it's better than... <laughs> yeah, than the last one, though, but it was a good take, though. Yeah, let me give you a hand. Oh, watch your fingers there. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna release it in the water. Yeah, I do that. She's... Yeah. She's took... Like barely hooked. There we go. There you go, girl. Thanks, bro. This is one of the fun parts with rubber baits. You can actually see how many pikes and you can see their, their teeth ripping them apart. And then you rip their lips and, and the pikes get angry and jump around. Now we're gonna do the the big brother or the big sister, the big McRubber. Jacob, you follow it, you follow it, you follow it, and you put it out there. Boom, it's done. And then for the, the stinger tackle, we need a little bit longer than for the other ones. I mean, you could actually use the McRubber one, but I believe sometimes when the pike has attacked the bait from, from half the size, you will miss it with the hooks. So we need a little bit longer piece of nylon coated steel wire about this size. Yeah. Swivel, put it in there. Boom. Leave it a little bit bigger, the loop there. Squeeze it like that. Ring of fire. Like that, put one spike there. In the end, this is the end. You squeeze it like this. You can, for the Big Mac rubber, you can either use two O's or three O's or four O's or whatever, but minimum two O's to get the, the best swimming action and the best hook, hook, hook setups. Like this. And then the good old spike. I like spike. Spike is a uh, sounds good. Spike it. The hook. Spike. Hook. Perfect. Mm. We did it. We we did we did the recommendation for the McRabber family with the stinging tackles. Now we can do the fishing. 